Rand Paul's wife purchased stock from Gilead Sciences and Rand Paul, who's supposed to report that, didn't do so. In fact, he didn't report it until 16 months after the deadline to do so, which does certainly raise some red flags. But the timing of the Gilead share purchases certainly also raises a red flag. And let me give you those details. So Rand Paul revealed that his wife bought stock in Gilead Sciences, which makes the antiviral drug used to treat COVID-19 on February 26, 2020, before the threat from the coronavirus was fully understood by the public and before it was classified as a pandemic by the World Health Organization. Now, the timing is important, especially because you had members of Congress, certainly various committees in the Senate, who were briefed in you know non-public meetings on coronavirus. So they had information about the severity of the pandemic before the general public did. The purchase was of between $1,000 and $15,000 in stock in Gilead, which makes the antiviral drug known as remdesivir. The company's stock was worth $74.70 per share on the day of the purchase and rose above $80 in March. It has since fluctuated and was worth $69.84 on the day of Paul's disclosure more than a year later. So again, it took him 16 months to report this, he missed the deadline. I think that's a huge problem, but what I would argue is a far larger problem is that we have members of Congress and the spouses of members of Congress who are able to invest in individual stocks. That in and of itself is a huge problem. Even if this gets investigated and there's no evidence of insider trading taking place, the fact that you have congressional lawmakers and their families invested in individual stocks certainly serves as a conflict of interest. And so was there insider trading taking place? We don't know yet, but we do have a few more details. Paul is a member of the Senate Health Committee, which in January, in January hosted Trump administration officials for a briefing on the coronavirus. So this briefing happens in January and then his wife, Rand Paul's wife decides to buy shares of remdesivir, which was later used as a treatment for coronavirus in February. So. I wanna get your thoughts, Charles, because this is an issue that's been pretty infuriating. I mean, when you really look at how widespread this problem is in Congress and how much it impacts some of the policy decisions they make, it shows you that you know this conflict of interest really does work against the best interests of the American people and the very individuals who voted these congressional lawmakers into office in the first place. So sure, there is a sentiment among many people that the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. and so. Examples of stories like these are just fuel for the fire that suggests that there is going to be a class of people who will continue to have and a class of people who will continue to have not. And when I talk about haves and have nots, I'm talking about information as much as I'm talking about money. And you you know, you went as far as to say that members of Congress and their families or their immediate families should not be allowed to trade publicly. And while I also you know, sort of had that in my head in terms of something that I was mulling over. I wasn't prepared to go that far. How, you know, I was going to say that maybe there should be tighter restrictions. But the reality is, when I think about it and I think it through, there's been story after story after story where we have seen that with the with the restrictions that are currently in place and the attempts that people have made, the, the, the ethics committee in both houses of Congress in terms of trying to create transparency around reporting and things of that nature, we still have continued violence. Violations. Right now, Senator Richard Burr is still under investigation from the FEC around um, around potential violations with respect to uh, tr insider trading. Mm -hmm. And he is one of the remaining senators. Some of the other ones, Feinstein and others, were Loeffler and others were, were cleared during uh, the initial probe that took place in the wake of a number of stocks being dumped immediately before the announcement um, of, of coronavirus and the pandemic. I say all that to say that what we've seen over and over again, time and time again, is that 
Unfortunately, people in power, positions of power, at least not in the United States Congress, can be trusted, cannot be trusted to make good decisions when it comes to trading and having access to information. And obviously, in many, in many cases, overwhelmingly having the means to take advantage of that information in the market. Mm -hmm. And so this is an example of something that unfortunately supports your position, in my opinion, because you know, one would like to think that if you put out stricter regulations for people in power, that that would be enough. But what we are seeing is that unfortunately that is not the case. And so you may be right in as much as perhaps the solution is just an altogether prohibition for that for members of Congress and their immediate families and or spouses, mm -hmm. you know, in order to curtail this because I don't see it changing anytime soon. And Rand Paul at the end of the day, not only should he know better, but quite frankly, he did know better. Yeah, he of course he did know better. I think it's, I mean, the fact that he waited this long to disclose that his wife purchased this particular stock, I think is, again, it's a huge red flag. But this goes beyond Rand Paul and his wife. And I also want to just clarify, when I say lawmakers and their families, I'm not talking about extended families. I'm certainly talking about their immediate family, their spouses, because they live in the same household. And so if their wives or their husbands are buying shares of a company, it still has the same impact as it would if it were the particular public servant doing it him or herself. And that's the thing, I would like our public servants to live up to that title. Being a public servant means that you have to sacrifice things, including investing in individual stocks for companies that you are gonna make legislative decisions about. And I love that you brought up Senator Burr because that was really the story that forced me to kind of explore how widespread this problem is. And I wanna share this video with you all because it gives you a sense of how widespread it is and how much of a problem it becomes in terms of governing. In March 2020, news spread that four US senators, including Burr, we're being investigated for insider trading. Ahead of the drastic escalations in this pandemic, while still reassuring citizens that the US was prepared. Senator Burr vehemently denies the allegations against him, but here's what we know. On January 24th, the Senate's Health Committee held a briefing with CDC Director Robert Redfield and White House Pandemic Advisor Dr. Anthony Fauci, according to the Washington Post. About two weeks later, Burr and Tennessee Senator Lamar Alexander wrote a Fox News editorial that the U.S. was better prepared than ever to deal with a pandemic like the coronavirus. Less than a week later, the Dow set an all-time record, hitting just over 29,551 points. On February 13th, Burr sold between $630,000 and $1.7 million worth of investments. He did it in 33 separate transactions, and he didn't buy a single share. Perhaps worse, Burr may have discussed the stock sales with his brother-in-law and others, according to reporting by ProPublica and a secret recording obtained by NPR. There's one thing that I can tell you about this. It is much more aggressive in its transition than anything that we have seen in recent history. It's probably more akin to the 1918 pandemic. So Burr implicated his own brother by having that conversation. He, it appears, acted on insider information while downplaying the coronavirus pandemic to the general public. Kelly Leffler did the same thing. Thankfully, she was elected out of office in the Senate runoff races in Georgia. And when it comes to holding these lawmakers to account or ensuring that they're not engaging in insider trading, how does that investigation go down? How do they determine whether or not there's any wrongdoing. Well, this next video will give you a little more information on that. Insider trading isn't just done by wealthy financiers or celebrities. Politicians have unique insight into what most outsiders don't. The size and scope of what Congress is involved in has broadened dramatically. I mean, whether it's healthcare, whether it's defense, whether it's financial markets, and they have market moving information and they're gonna act on that information. I mean, information is king. A groundbreaking 2004 study by a group of professors and researchers examined the records of U.S. Senators between 1993 and 1998. The study found that a portfolio tracking the stocks that the U.S. Senators bought during the same time period outperformed the market by 85 basis points each month. And a portfolio that tracked the stocks that the Senators sold during the period lagged behind the market by 12 basis points. The study concluded that the Senators knew appropriate times to both buy and sell their common stocks. The Stock Act is enforced by the Department of Justice and the Securities and Exchange Commission. 
And where do they get their funding? They get their funding from Congress, which is the very body that they are supposed to be regulating. So the Stock Act is good, but I think we need to do a whole lot better. I mean, Charles, I mean, when you think about how Congress makes the decisions regarding appropriations for the very bodies that do these investigations into insider trading. And when you also consider that they do these Senate Ethics Committee investigations, meaning that their colleagues conduct investigations into what they've been doing. And it's very likely that their own colleagues are engaging in the same behavior. The investigators are likely engaging in the same behavior. I mean, it's all a farce. It's all insanely ridiculous that the investigations go down the way they do. Um, and so after the Senate Ethics Committee, Senate Ethics Committee looked into Leffler and Feinstein, they argued that no, 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 we can't, there's no evidence of uh, insider trading, not at all, nothing, come on. No, you're, you're absolutely right. And I think that at the end of the day, Congress has a decision to make with regard to uh, public transparency and civic engagement. And this is a larger, broader, more ideological conversation, but it's still one that's relevant. And it's relevant because if we think about what we saw on January 6th, if we think about what we have seen in the wake of last year's election in terms of their people still who do not want to accept the results because they believe that our democracy was hijacked, right? There is this, this overarching sense of misinformation and lack of transparency. And when you connect the dots across these things, what you will find is you cannot have it both ways. Mm -hmm. You cannot put forth a system where the game appears to be rigged against folks and then you know lambast the people who don't trust the system and think that the game is rigged. That's what they're seeing and that's what you're showing them. So if you want people to participate in earnest and you want people to trust the system and have faith in it and believe that it operates in it with integrity, then you have to avoid situations like these where it appears as though you're trying to have your cake and eat it too. And I think that's part of the problem that we don't necessarily make connections to. Mm -hmm. We need to understand that these have broader implications beyond just Rand Paul or, or Richard Burr or anyone else on the individual level, but that it really does damage people's level of faith and integrity in the system that you are asking people and quite frankly requiring them to participate in as a cornerstone in how we live and operate as Americans. I think that's such a great point. I mean, we're seeing the consequences of the lack of trust in our institutions. You know, when we look at, you know, groups of conspiracy theorists and all of that and we wonder like what why won't they believe the information? Why won't they believe the evidence? Well, they've lost trust in institutions in including our you know, government, Congress, and this behavior certainly doesn't help to mitigate that or alleviate that. Well, let's move on to our next story. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just gonna you know, add a moment of levity to this before we move on. Imagine getting information and then betting on the wrong horse I when know. doing it. I know. Like you think about Desivir and, and Rand Paul's wife, she actually is losing money now, which actually, you know, which which sucks, quite frankly. But I think that's the sort of silver lining to the story. It's kind of like imagine you got the inside track and you bet on the wrong horse to win. And then that to me just kind of makes me laugh. But I know, it is know pretty amazing. Win. I love that they're also using that as a defense, by the way. It's like, no, no, we didn't do anything wrong. We're losing money from this. It's funny, so it's okay. Yeah, no, obviously it's not okay, but we'll see what happens. I mean. I, I don't have a lot of faith considering the outcome of the investigation into Leffler and Feinstein. I know Burr is still being investigated because his case was even more egregious than others. But we'll see how it plays out. I, I just think of, of the best way to prevent any type of speculation of wrongdoing is to prevent these public servants and their spouses from in, invest, investing in individual stocks. It's that simple. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.